Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Church, at the beginning of today's Mass, mass asks in the opening prayer, the Collect, for two things, the gift of pardon and the gift of peace. These two gifts go together. We might say that one is the fruit of the other. Many people might wonder how we can find peace in our hearts. And I think there's three things in the text of today's Mass that show us those ways which God gives true peace to our hearts. Peace is a supernatural gift. The Lord says, the peace I give you is a peace the world cannot give. The first way the Lord grants us peace is through pardon of our sins, living with a clean conscience. When something weighs down upon us, when we know there's something on our conscience, something we've done wrong, we can't find peace. When we know maybe we've injured someone's reputation through gossip, maybe we've lied about a matter of importance, or maybe some other sin, we can't find peace in our hearts. It sort of niggles away at the back of our mind. Our conscience, if it's not been dulled by habitual serious sin, and even then sometimes too, will trouble us. It's as if sometimes our souls are in the midst of a storm. The only answer is to seek the Lord's pardon. Only he can calm the waves. Pardon and peace. One follows the other. We can't be filled with God's peace unless we're first at rights with him by receiving his pardon. St. Paul in the epistle tells us that the days we live in are evil. It's a temptation, I think, of every age to think that the days they live in are worse than any other. There can be no era as bad as ours. None, no time as difficult to live in as ours are. It's a temptation every age Christians have faced. St. Paul, of course, lived in a time of persecution of the faith. He died as a martyr. He had to combat the immoral pagan culture of the Greeks. When we consider the worries of the world, spend too much time maybe reading the news, or certain blogs, or just thinking about those things in the world which are difficult, when we focus on those, it can cause us to lose peace of heart. It's interesting that St. Paul, after talking about the evil days the Ephesians lived in, reminds them to be sober and not to turn to drink. Because when we're worried and when we're anxious, we want to find a substitute for that peace of heart, that interior peace. Find something else to replace it. Drink might be one of them, or overeating or even sometimes just wallowing in our worry can be an almost an intoxicant that replaces true peace of heart. But St. Paul proposes a remedy in our epistle. He says, rather than fill yourselves with drink in these evil times, we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you remember from your catechism, Peace is one of the twelve fruits of the Holy Spirit. The fruits, unlike the gifts which are given to us with sanctifying grace at baptism and confirmation, the fruits grow when we live a good Christian life led by the Holy Spirit. They're literally the fruit, the result of the action of the Holy Spirit in our souls. On Monday mornings, when priests pray lords from the breviary, when there's no other feast or no particular season, there's a beautiful hymn for the morning prayer, which asks that we be filled with the sober inebriation of the Spirit. Inebriation with drink leads us to lose control of our senses. It debases us. But inebriation with God's Holy Spirit 
instead raises the soul, lifts us up, fills the soul with peace and joy, and anchors it firmly in the Lord. So we might ask ourselves this morning, have I ever considered the role of the Holy Spirit in my life? Do I pray to the Holy Spirit? He is equal to God the Father and the Son in majesty and splendour. The Holy Spirit is truly God. We should constantly invoke his aid as we begin our prayer or spiritual reading in difficult moments during the day when we're filled with worry. Call upon the Holy Spirit to inebriate our souls. Call upon him to flood our souls with his peace, a peace the world cannot give. A peace that's truly necessary if we're to pray well, if we're to live a Christian life confident in God. The third means for peace of soul that our Mass today suggests to us is thanksgiving. All is grace. Everything we have, everything we are, is a gift. Everything is a gift from the hands of God. Even those things which seem difficult or we can't understand somehow are in God's providence, are his gift to us for our sanctification. God has given each one of us, without exception, so many gifts, we couldn't count them. We couldn't number them all. And when life is tough, as St. Paul puts it, when the day is evil, we tend to focus on trouble, on worry, on our struggle. And yes, we have to deal with that. We have to think about that sometimes. But we should never forget to be thankful for God's gifts. So when St. Paul tells the people of the Ephesians, be filled with the Holy Spirit, he then says, the Holy Spirit will lead you into thanksgiving to thank God. Even in suffering, the saints saw the hand of God. They saw so much to thank God for in their lives. So our epistle reminds us today that we should never go a day without thanking God. Call to mind all those gifts we know that God has given us. Thank God too for the gifts that maybe we don't see but are hidden from us that God has given. The greatest thanksgiving, of course, we have is the sacrifice of the Mass. In the Mass, the Church joins her prayer with that of Christ on the cross, thanking God for the gift of redemption, the gift of grace, thanking God for the, all the gifts that he has poured out on the Church and on the world. So today, trusting in God, we draw near to the altar, coming to thank him for all his gifts, coming to ask for an outpouring of his Holy Spirit in our hearts, that we might find that fruit, the fruit of true peace, which trusts in God and places all our confidence in him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.